Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have some pretty intriguing PlayStation 6 news. Now, I know a lot of people might be thinking, oh my god, we haven't even gone through the PlayStation 5 Pro yet. Why well, do we have to hear a little bit more news on the PlayStation 6? But we actually had a chance to cover up a little bit of this news beforehand, and as well as kind of making its way around town again, where there is some big rumors on what the future of the PlayStation 6 might hold. Now, we've been hearing a lot of stuff, like I said, for the PlayStation 5 Pro, and I think a lot of that has kind of been mostly fleshing out. Like, we'll have a few more videos on the channel when it comes to it so subscribe if you guys want to or be up to date for that stuff but right now we're kind of looking towards i guess the next big rumor so make sure you guys are subscribed as we go out throughout the video itself you know the twitter and twitch room as well down below and i appreciate you guys all so much watching let's go and dive on into the video itself so we've actually had a pretty pretty intriguing post over here or number one, obviously the PlayStation 6 wants to try to become like the best, most powerful console in the generation, and as well also kind of confirming their deal when it comes to AMD. Now we have a pretty big thread coming over here when it comes from I like basically reset era, which is basically like this, you know, icon era type website. Kind of just think of like the forums where a lot of people like to go and they can obviously like talk about games and talk about leaks and talk about these rumors and all of this. And so take everything with a grain of salt. But intriguingly enough, the PlayStation 6 is planned to be the most powerful console of the generation, which uh, we can dive in a little bit more, but usually Xbox is meant to be their number one, as we've seen in the past little bit in the generations. And then Sony is only considering AMD and is also going to be having a handheld console and as well also has uh, been looking through these contracts too as well. Now, we've been kind of seeing this news floating around a little bit more. Now, when it comes to all this type of drama, too, and we've kind of discussed this a little bit, as we've gone through these, we're seeing more very, very proper conversations. Or as of, like, even right this second, we're seeing even more updates. But the idea behind it is the console is going to be two different consoles, a handheld console as well as also a proper normal console. So instead of having, like, an Xbox Series X and S, it's going to be more so focused on a handheld, which makes sense, think the PlayStation Portal, and then a normal console itself, PlayStation 6, Right, which also wants to make sense. Think of the PlayStation 5. So this is a little bit on the older recap with a little bit of new news mixed in and where Sony is planning to make the PlayStation 6 the most powerful console, the generation, and of such wants to push for it. So a new video from Red Gaming Tech from a while ago, which is kind of like just kind of take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, probably had big updates on the Sony's next generation system, but also on the PS5 Pro, which we've covered the PS5 Pro quite a bit. So while Sony has yet to announce this mid-generation refresh system, it seems more and more likely the console's indeed releasing, as third-party studios received their, their dev kits is more in regards to the PS5 Pro. And obviously that's on regards, that's not confirming this 100% for this year. Uh, some people might have the console rumored to be canceled, but I think a lot of people are assuming that PS5 Pro is going to be coming out. And we haven't seen a downright no from PlayStation, so it's probably going to be coming. But once again, with all this ongoing, we're seeing these leaks and information, that just adds a little bit more fuel to the fire for the PlayStation 6. So, intriguingly enough. So, as for the PlayStation 6, the console has been in the works for around one year, and its specs like CPU and RAM haven't been finalized yet. So, like, obviously, like, the PS5 Pro is not even finalized yet. How would the PS6 even? That's going to be many years down the road. But Sony is talking with the development studios as of now to tweak the system, which is now almost certainly going to be powered by AMD, which makes sense. They've actually worked with their own proper uh, like architectures, and it's typically what you utilize for the PS5 or Xbox or various other consoles on how to fine-tune their internal specs, how to basically make like sometimes CPU, GPU work together, and of course be able to mass-produce these four consoles. And as of right, the second seems like AMD is the only one they're going for to as well, because they've had other things such as NVIDIA and other things, but they went for AMD. Now, uh, one of the bigger things is they also want to make the push for the, being the most powerful con like con like console overall. And that's a big thing because Xbox has always been kind of known, I guess, for maybe slightly lesser quality in terms of exclusive games, but better overall console. So better internal specs, better like GPU, CPU, even though maybe just a little bit marginally. Good example is the Xbox Series X is slightly better, and then the PS5 is right this second. But at the same time, they also have their own perks. The PS5 has the SSD, Game Pass for Xbox, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But basically right now, basically, Sony said to make the PS5, PS6 the most powerful console of the generation and is ready to take things slowly. So as the console's release window is said to be 2028, which is still a ways away, uh, this goal is achieved remains unknown, but it is being said that the Japanese company is tripling down on ray tracing and path tracing, which if you also look at this, would make sense. They just added now from most recent PlayStation Pro leaks, uh, the PSSR, 
which is PlayStation's like AI and kind of upscaling technology to go basically make everything work. Like they basically want to make sure everything is like more integrated with the software and using like the hardware and software combined to make the system better. So if they're already trying to test this out right now with the alleged PSSR technology leaks and also improving ray tracing and other variables in the console itself, this would make a lot of sense that the PS6 is meant to be a way bigger console and focusing once again, even add a little more legitimacy to these leaks on the ray tracing and patch tracing. So basically they're saying the later is not universally supported due to its massive performance cost. Machine learning and AI, especially in regards to NPCs' interactions, to offer innovative and advanced gaming experiences. So once again, all these initial leaks are in regards to AI, which has been the kind of the flavor of the years, even when we look at how much Xbox has been utilizing it for support, their consoles, whatever it might be. But as well, also pushing this like machine learning to make the games run better, to make the games run more efficiently and make it more optimized which I think that's cool. Like, I like the idea behind that. But one of the bigger issues is that we don't know the internal specs. Like, we also don't know how well it's going to run the PS5 Pro because the PS5 Pro is running good. Like, I think the PS5 Pro has been doing, like, in terms of specific leaks, may not be the biggest grand, uh, jump in upgrades, but, like, having something unique that actually makes them worthwhile seems nice. So if they can test everything with the PSSR on the PS5 Pro and then bring it to the PS6 after, like, three years of testing and also update the graphics on everything, CPU, GPU, APU, RAM, memory, etc., and also just basically have those few years of utilizing that data and making it better for the PS6, which the PS6 will most likely sell way more than the PS5 Pro. Most people already have their PS5s, over 50 million. By the time the Pro comes out, I'd say 55, 60 million, not really sure exactly. And middle of the life cycle. While if you go to a PS6, like, I'd maybe get some in a few million PS5 Pros, because people are going to buy it at some point, especially later in the cycle. But the PS6 will sell a lot more. So almost utilize the PS5 Pro to be like a testing as well. So some of the bigger news, though, is that also uh, Moore's Law is Dead revealed that Sony did go and confirm their contract with the AMD for the PS6 and the handheld version of the same console too as well. And that's intriguing because it is working with AMD. AMD seems to be making both, and it is a very big comparison to the Xbox Series S and X, where the Xbox Series S is a slightly worse console, but cheaper. Uh, and then the Xbox Series X is the big console. So think the same thing for this. The PS, like, PlayStation portable like psp2 whatever word you want to go utilize for it will have a slightly lesser like a, a gpu cpu apu etc but at the same time would most likely be cheaper and either a handheld version but some other new things are saying that the contract if sony signed a contract for the ps6 and for this handheld at the same time like he's mentioning this means that the ps6 will be leased with two skus day one so like i said like you have a console and then you have a handheld or a weaker console one less powerful SKU for the handheld, and obviously probably like a cheaper price point if it works out well, and then one powerful SKU for the console. So we even mentioned that Sony could also probably sell a weaker console with the same specs as the handheld for cheaper, like Microsoft did with the Series S. So in theory, there could be three consoles, uh, depending on these leaks. Number one, a proper, pure PS6. You would then have the handheld device, so think like how we have the PlayStation Portal, but better specs or how we had the PSP, PS Vita back in the day. And then we would also have a slightly weird mid-tier console, which we're not sure exactly how it would be worse, uh, but that'd be like a Xbox Series S. So some maybe ideas would be a slightly worse GPU, CPU, because it'd be the same thing in the handheld. Maybe most likely way lower memory, because you can't have as much memory most likely in a compact device, or just maybe just a little bit of tone down of everything, like worse APU, CPU, GPU, memory, RAM, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. but at the same time, it'd be cheaper. Um, so in theory, I'd probably always go with the handheld instead, but I also like the idea if they have a pure by itself console. So then like the Switch, how that's a pure handheld device that still works. I think that'd be a really good console because PlayStation's done already with the Vita and PSP and somewhat with the portal, although that's more of like a weird like stream cloud hosting stuff. So if you can somehow update all the PS Plus servers, get cloud hosting on your PlayStation Portable and also your cheaper devices, it makes a lot of sense. Like, I do think the Xbox Series MS is a really good console, although it just wasn't good enough and was phased out. If you have something that's way cheaper, it has worked, like the Xbox Series S has actually sold very well, but at the same time, if you can maintain it or keep it portable, so if you only have those two, like one portable, one um, big device, it'd probably make a lot more sense. The Xbox Series S is kind of weird because if it was a portable device, it'd probably do way, way better. 
uh, I think the Switch or think like a Lenovo. But either way, it's kind of cool to go and see that we have brand new, it seems like confirmations that AMD has signed for the PS6 that new games are coming. And at the end of the day, I think it's really kind of cool. So give me your thoughts and comments down below. And I appreciate y'all for watching in the first place. Subscribe because you're new and follow the Twitter and Twitch down below.